Καλησπέρα σας. Νίκος, Elias, thank you for inviting me to speak at this year's Greek Economic Summit. This is my sixth summit and the second that you've managed to pull off during a global pandemic. So congratulations for that. And I mention this because if this year has shown us anything, it's that Greece's economic resilience and fortitude knows no bounds. Under Prime Minister Mitsotakis' leadership, the Greek government acted promptly and swiftly this past year. They got ahead of the rest of the world in introducing digital vaccine certificates and have been innovators in using economic resources to encourage Greek citizens to go out and get vaccinated. And I also want to thank the Greek government for being a European leader in opening up to American visitors this spring and for the health ministry's ongoing efforts to keep us all safe. This past year, of course, was also notable as the United States celebrated with Greece its bicentennial, reflecting our historic friendship and the great progress we've made while looking forward to an even more promising future. During our strategic dialogue in October, Secretary of State Blinken and Foreign Minister Dendius committed to build on the momentum of the past few years and to lift our relationship across the board. So the Chamber's theme this year, re redefining growth for an inclusive and sustainable future, complements perfectly our two countries' strategic goals. Working closely with American industry leaders, Greece's economic growth is accelerating and investment opportunities are growing. Our country's collaboration in the digital sector and our investments in renewable energy and infrastructure are creating jobs while ensuring greater security, stability and prosperity throughout the region. For instance, Digital Realty's acquisition of Lambda Helix and the expansion underway to triple their capabilities. Microsoft's plans to develop three data centers here in Attica and investments by innovative American companies like Cisco, Pfizer, Deloitte and Amazon Web Services. These are all great examples of how American companies are helping to advance and accelerate Greece's digital revolution. America's growing and deepening investment in Greece helps position this country as a regional leader for digital services and technology. These investments also have a multiplier effect in their economic impact, opening the doors to greater economic cooperation and opportunity throughout the region. In November, I had the opportunity to visit Lambda Helix's data center outside Athens. Since its 2020 acquisition by the American firm Digital Realty, the company has begun investing millions in two new data centers that will triple the company's capabilities and enable it to provide services to more firms in Greece and throughout the Eastern Mediterranean. Microsoft, meanwhile, on top of its significant data center investment, recently celebrated the launch of three separate cutting edge applications for ancient Olympia. Thanks to Microsoft's HoloLens, its augmented reality application, and a new online interactive platform, visitors to ancient Olympia, whether in person or joining virtually from thousands of miles away, can now experience one of Greece's most impressive cultural sites as if they were walking the streets of that city 3,000 years ago. We are supporting Greece's economic growth agenda through robust public diplomacy programming that not only advances our people-to-people -people relationship, but seeks to provide training and skill building for the next generation of Greek entrepreneurs and business leaders. Earlier this fall, for instance, we launched a program called Connect the Dots an online platform to enable young Greek entrepreneurs to take advantage of mentorship opportunities with the best and brightest of the Greek American community. This collaboration with the Hellenic Initiative is just one example of how the Greek diaspora puts our shared values into practice, serving as a force multiplier for the US-Greece relationship. Of course, this past year has also underscored the urgency of our collective efforts on energy transition 
As climate change continues to threaten the prosperity we have worked so hard together to create. I want to commend the Greek government in this regard for its handling of the devastating wildfires this summer in Evia, ancient Olympia, and around Athens, which prioritized public safety and helped to avoid the large loss of life that accompanied earlier fire disasters. The United States was also very proud to provide a P-8 aerial reconnaissance aircraft to support Greece's firefighting efforts. And more recently, a team of experts from USAID and the U.S. Forest Service traveled to Evia, Athens, and ancient Olympia to exchange expertise in managing the process of recovery. The August fires made it clear that climate change and environmental sustainability must be at the forefront of our political and economic and business agendas. U.S. firms are ready to assist Greece with innovative firefighting technologies and solutions to help protect human life, property, and Greece's spectacular natural heritage. Whether it be area capabilities, firefighting methods, or even training, U.S. firms like Ericsson, Air Tractor, and Motorola stand as committed partners to the Hellenic Republic. And as we can pivot towards more sustainable sources of energy, we're seeing increased interest from American investors and leaders in clean energy technologies, storage solutions, smart technologies, and e-mobility. American companies like Amoresco, GE, 547 Energy, Advent Technologies, Tesla, Blink, are all calling Greece home while rapidly expanding their footprint here in the renewable energy sector. I recently attended, for instance, the opening ceremony for the Xericas Wind Park in Kefalonia. There, the American firm Amoresco collaborated with ResInvest and PPC Renewables to bring the wind park online in record time. This project is also a great signal of Amoresco's ongoing commitment to Greece, and I look forward to seeing how the company will grow over the coming years. In northern Greece, 547 Energy is proceeding with a development that will become the largest onshore wind facility in all of Greece. And in Patras, Advent Technologies is advancing cutting-edge hydrogen fuel cell technologies that will drive energy storage, mobility, and industry, and is a key part of the government's White Dragon project for Western Macedonia. The United States is going to continue to partner with Greece on clean energy and sustainability initiatives. And I'm excited to see many more of these that will be the, bring the best of American and Greek innovation together. These energy projects and investments in the clean and renewable sector complement the numerous fossil fuel energy infrastructure projects that are helping to wean this region away from coal and Russian gas, including the interconnector Greece-Bulgaria and the Alexandropoli floating storage and regasification unit, which is now U.S. invested through the participation of BlackRock in GasLog, with a project that's expected to come online by the end of 2023. The United States and Greece are also full steam ahead to accelerate maritime infrastructure investments to support these critical regional energy projects. The U.S. International Development Finance Corporation has an important role to play here and has been a key partner based on U.S. congressional authorizations that have allowed it to continue discussions with American bidders on the ports of Alexandropoli and Kavala. The United States also strongly supports other regional projects that will help advance interconnections among European allies and partners including the newly announced electricity connectors with Egypt and the Three Seas Initiative, which we know Greece is keen on participating in. The United States believes that a secure, prosperous, and resilient Three Seas region is key to connecting more closely the countries of Central and Eastern Europe, not only with the rest of the European Union, but also with the United States. Turning from energy to telecommunications for just a second, I want to commend Greece once again for its leadership in this important sector. We welcomed, for instance, Cosmote's launch of a 5G network in Attica and Thessaloniki, 
which is built exclusively with equipment from trusted vendors. And in Northern Greece, I've been especially proud to see the great strides that Pfizer has made, including the inauguration of its global centers for digital innovation and business operations and services. Thessaloniki continues to earn its reputation as a burgeoning tech hub with Cisco's Digital Transformation and Skills Center, as well as expanded operations by Deloitte and other companies following soon. As we review this past year, let's also reflect on the extraordinary success of the tourism sector, which could not have been achieved without the leadership of Prime Minister Mitsotakis and the Greek government's introduction of digital vaccine certificates. The rollout of these certificates under Minister Perikakis caught the world's attention. And thanks to these innovations, Greece is not just meeting its tourism goals, but exceeding them with record numbers of Americans coming to enjoy all that Greece has to offer. I was so glad to see a record nine direct flights this year from the United States with United Airlines, Delta and American all providing direct services beginning in May, accelerating the context between our two countries. And I would be remiss in this regard not to mention the leadership of former tourism minister, Harry Theo Harris, who took the initial initiative last spring to travel to the United States and have leading personal engagement that helped to lock in these new services, something that I know Minister Kakilius is determined to build on in 2022. These flights undoubtedly contributed to the high revenues in Greece's tourist industry this year. And having taken several of these flights over the summer, packed with excited Americans, most of whom had not traveled in over a year, I know how important this service was to our visitors and how much they looked forward to their time in Greece. It reaffirmed for me the great degree of trust that Greece instills in America, whether it's American travelers with the government's dedication to a rigorous vaccination program or a hospitality industry well-versed in COVID-19 safety measures. To conclude, I want to underline that a stronger and more prosperous Greece is not just in America's interests. Whether it's redrawing the energy map of Southeast Europe, diversifying energy sources and routes, or taking advantage of the Balkan market and transforming Greece into a key digital hub for this region. Incentivizing the crucially needed brain gain and bringing back to Greece the best of Greek and American innovation, or expanding international connections through the Eastern Mediterranean and beyond. When the United States and Greece work together, we all benefit. Our collaboration builds on a remarkable 200-year friendship between our countries, forged in a shared struggle for freedom. And in this regard, the Embassy and I are committed to building on President Biden's personal promise to take this relationship to even greater heights in the year ahead. Evharistopoli and Nikos, I look forward to the conversation. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Please. Uh, I am delighted to be having this conversation with you for the sixth time. As and, am I. <laughs> and by listening to um, you speak earlier, I cannot but think of the tremendous progress that's been achieved during your tenure. And I thank you for that and congratulate you. And thank you very much for, for, the, for the friendship, the support, and the partnership all, during all these years. Now, I have prepared a few questions. And um, the first one is, the structural enhancement of the bilateral ties across the board is unquestionable, as they are reflected predominantly by the continuous arrival of US business titans. From energy and education to biotech and defense, and from virtual capital to funds with uh, their institutional or innovation-focused investments, the U.S. is present almost everywhere. What's next? That's a terrific question. Um, 
And what I want to start with is my assurance to you that we're not finished, that we are dedicated as an embassy, as an administration, to building on the momentum we've achieved. I think one enormous opportunity will arise from the ERF, the 32 billion euros that Greece will be receiving over the next couple of years as part of the European COVID recovery program. I commend the Greek government for moving so quickly to elaborate its program, but also for identifying a set of priorities, especially in the area of digital technology and the green energy economy that fits so perfectly with the priorities and advantages of American industry. I know that American companies are keen to leverage those resources to help this ERF pool be the game changer that it should be for the, the structure of the Greek economy. And I think one of the things that we've achieved together since 2018 in the Thessaloniki International Fair is we have really built reality behind the vision that we elaborated in Thessaloniki of Greece being viewed not just as a market of 11 million consumers, but as a gateway to a much wider market across the southeastern European region. And, and nothing illustrates that better than the big new investments from, from AWS, from Microsoft, uh, from Digital Realty. All of these cloud-based investments are keyed to the larger regional marketplace. I'm hopeful that we can see even more of that as we move ahead. Um, in the green economy area, there's so much possibility for renewables, for interconnection of electricity grids. We've really just started to scratch the surface on all of this. So I'm confident you'll continue to see investment and growth there. As I said in my remarks, I'm very excited about the tourism sector. Uh, Greece clearly exceeded expectations this year, and I give great credit to the government for the steps that it took to make that possible. I think the appetite for post-pandemic travel in 2022 will be even greater. And I know that Minister Kakilias is already lay laying the foundation to accelerate that, and American companies and American service providers are perfectly positioned to help support that effort. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. And we'll have uh, Minister Kikilias with us later on. So Great. He, I hope he will share with, uh, with us his, his vision of Good. what's you should, next. You should ask him to give his point spread on, on <laughs> Absolutely. How, he's going to, how he's going to exceed the, the strong accomplishments of 2021. Um, you have been a vivid advocate during the first years of your post of the need to, to dynamically communicate the reforms wins and changes that have taken place in Greece to all stakeholders in the U.S. Yeah. How can we empower our agenda in the U.S. given that practically most of the countries are trying to promote their messages and attract investments or support? So I listened very carefully to what Mike Manitos and Andy Zemanides said yesterday. at this summit yesterday. And I thought Mike was exactly right when he emphasized the importance of communicating how much Greece has changed. I think that message is starting to get out. You have no better communicator in this regard than Prime Minister Mitsotakis. But it's a message that has to be repeated over and over again, drawing attention to the record of success and the fact that the companies that have come here in a big way have, in fact, exceeded their expectations. Perhaps the best example of that is Pfizer. Um, and the fact that an investment that was originally scaled for the high double digits or low triple digits is now approaching a headcount of a thousand um, with a much more ambitious scope of operations in Thessaloniki than was originally imagined when Albert Bourla brought his board of directors here in the summer of 2019 to try to convince them that he wasn't crazy in advocating for this new program in, in Greece. It's that kind of success that we need to draw attention to. And the more we can get private investors and CEOs talking about their experiences here, their positive experience with the responsiveness of government, the better off we'll be. Um, again, in the digital space, I've been so impressed by the number 
of CEOs and top corporate leaders from American firms who've described Minister Perikakis to me as one of their most effective interlocutors anywhere in the European Union. Um, the fact that Greece in the technology space is not trying to protect any local incumbents, but is rather trying to attract as much human capital back as possible and then build the strongest possible industry, um, oftentimes in partnership with American firms. Those are messages that we want to keep getting out, and there are no better communicators than the representatives of the firms themselves. Um, we've talked a lot about the healthcare sector, and, and this is an area where Greece already has great accomplishments. The fact that you have so many American pharma companies that are run by extraordinarily successful Greek-American business leaders and, and researchers um, tells you there's, there's something here. Uh, I hope that we can continue the work that we began with Minister Kikilius, now with Minister Plevitas, to address some of the outstanding concerns and really build this into another area of success in our trade and investment relationship, including for things like clinical trials, um, where Greece clearly has the, the human capital necessary to succeed, and it's a question of building the policy framework. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. I, I, you mentioned uh, Minister Pirakakis. I will never forget the first meeting we had uh, at the Grand Bretagne with uh, uh, our ICT committee. Right. How impressed they were by, by the minister. They are waving at me, so I, I need to move quickly. One last question. Sure. So you have been clearly one of the most successful, the most energetic ambassadors, for, for some of us maybe the most, in Greece. Given your experience, if there was one piece of advice that you would give a new member of your team at the embassy coming into Greece, what would that be? First of all, travel around and see all that this country offers. Which you've done a lot of. This is an extraordinary corner of the world. The biggest mistake that one can make is to just stay here in Athens and not see all of the treasures that this country has the natural resources, but also the human resources. Uh, you know, the, the fact that I discovered Advent in Industries in the Patras Technology Park, the fact that you have um, RACAP in drama, um, manufacturing also in the United States and producing products for the global electricity supply chain. Um, I constantly run, on these, run into these companies in unlikely locations and I always ask, how did this happen? And, and why is this here? And it usually has to do with an entrepreneurial Greek-American with family ties somewhere. But I mean, there's so much to see outside of the capital. And then I think also, um, I think listening to our Greek hosts. You know, I always say a, a huge part of the job of any American diplomat is to be a good listener. Because we don't have all the answers. Greece has lived through a particularly challenging decade. Um, it's easy to forget how difficult things were, even when I arrived here in 2016, when people worried about the stability of the financial system, when every Troika review produced a new round of finger pointing and, and acrimony, um, when there were worries about whether the government might still somehow fall out of the Eurozone to have escaped that dismal cycle and become a country that in 2021 will have one of the highest growth rates in all of Europe, a country which is emulated in Europe for the smart, technolo technologically informed approach that it has used to combating the, the pandemic, the fact that it has developed such a strong record of attracting foreign investment from serious American companies, that is an extraordinarily strong record, and it's something that we all need to bear in mind. And, and as I said, we need to listen to our Greek partners as they describe to us both how far they've come, but also where they want to go in the future. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you for, uh, for the partnership. Thank you for all the memories that we will, we will, we will share for all, all these accomplishments. And I look forward to seeing you next year for your seventh. Great. Well, well thank you, Nico. There's a, there's, there's a PETA coming, a PETA coming, yes. coming up next month, I hope. And, and I want to say, too, 
how much I have valued um, our partnership with the Hellenic American Chamber of Commerce. We still have a long way our, to go. Our number one force multiplier, and we're not finished yet. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for some Great. Thanks a lot.